Hi. I'm just stocking up my tackle box with some of the items for the trip I'm about to take. You know, most of my trips are spent fishing for info on the outside environment. On this trip, though, the environment we're going to be looking at is your personal health environment. A good way to balance and strengthen our internal environment is through exercise. Today, I'm heading out to fish for ideas on how and why we should all make room in our lives for personal fitness. Well, I think I'm all packed and ready to go. It seems like our lifestyles today are more hectic and active than ever. It also seems like there's more focus on sports and fitness, too. <laughs> then why are people today less physically fit than at any other time in history? Maybe we're less physically fit because our activities are more passive than active. We're really into basketball, but mostly from a lazy chair. Or we rush to school or work, but we do it sitting in a car. What's my point? My point is that these activities don't improve our health, but exercise does. When we do regular exercise, we become stronger and healthier through the use of our muscles. Exercises like running or swimming can help improve our cardiovascular endurance. That's the efficiency of our hearts. Those type exercises can also improve our respiratory endurance. That deals with our lungs. We can strengthen and tone our muscles through activities like weightlifting, pull-ups, or push-ups. And we can improve our flexibility through things like stretching or gymnastics. Exercise also gives us more energy and affects our brain's biochemistry, making us feel better psychologically. Let's go back to the bit about endurance. Endurance activities cause you to breathe in more oxygen. That's good. That's very good. But why is that good? A sports physiology lab is an ideal place to find the answer. Hello, my name is Michael Welsh. I'm an exercise physiologist, um, which means that I look at uh, individuals and how they exercise and what happens to their body when they are active. And, uh, we're going to put Christina on a treadmill and we're going to determine how fit Christina is uh, using a, a particular setup that involves all what you see here. And based on that information, we're going to be able to say, uh, uh, you know, how strong Christina is, how fit she is. What you see here is two big soda bottles, okay? Each of them uh, will hold about three liters of Coke or whatever. Uh, but when we breathe, we breathe about two of these bottles, regular air in and out of our lungs every minute. Okay, so about six liters of air. When we exercise, we go from just two bottles to probably about um, 40 bottles or so, where we breathe a lot more air uh, and because we need that to continue the exercise. But when a horse gets on a treadmill, they um, breathe much more than a human being does, and they may breathe as much as 400, 500 liters of air per minute. And we're going to find out what her VO2 max is which is probably one of the best measures that we know of uh, that represents fitness. The heart and the muscle make up what we call VO2, which is how much oxygen we consume when we exercise. When you are exercising, there's more volume of blood that goes around, and so the heart isn't uh, working as hard, it can beat much less for each given workload because there's more fluid on board and you can pump that around. One of the things that we aim for is to move people from low levels of fitness to high levels of fitness, hoping that that will protect them throughout life. This is an aerobics class. You might wonder why they call it that. Well, have you ever heard of the word aerobic? The word aerobic means with air or oxygen. Aerobic exercise means doing long periods of uninterrupted physical activity at a low to moderate intensity. 
This type of exercise increases flow of oxygen and blood to organs like your heart, lungs, and brain. That's why what we're doing here is called aerobics, because it's an aerobic exercise. Other aerobic exercises are distance running, lap swimming, and cycling. There's yet another type of exercise called anaerobic. Anaerobic exercise has quick bursts of high intensity, like football, baseball, basketball, or sprinting. It's interrupted by rest, while aerobic exercise is continuous. Well, I guess by stopping to talk with you, I've just turned my aerobics workout into an anaerobics workout. Uh-oh, I think I'm in trouble. I better get back to it. The heart beats about 100,000 times a day and 36.5 million times a year. Holy mackerel! If you want to improve your cardiovascular endurance through exercise, you have to reach your target heart rate. What's a target heart rate? That's the number of times your heart needs to beat per minute for exercise to improve your endurance. We're going to run on the track to improve our cardiovascular fitness. And we can find out if we're actually doing that by figuring out our target heart rate. The target heart rate, again, means our heart needs to beat at least this number of times for us to improve our endurance. But how do you figure it out? That's easy. First, you subtract your age from 220 and then multiply that times 70%. This gives you your target heart rate. I'm 14 years old, so my target heart rate would be about 144 beats per minute. Then while you're doing exercise, you can pause to check your pulse or heartbeat rate by feeling your carotid artery. That's the artery on your neck. Or your radial artery. That's the artery that runs through your wrist. Carotid artery? Radial artery. Radial artery? Carotid artery. Feel the number of times your heart beats in 10 seconds. Then multiply that number times 6 to give you your heartbeat for 60 seconds. We're improving our cardiovascular endurance. Hey, that's cool! To get maximum cardiovascular benefits, you should hold your target rate for at least 30 minutes. Remember, the more you condition yourself like this, the better blood circulation you'll have and the stronger your heart will become. As a result, your resting heart rate will be slower and your heart will beat less to accomplish the same work which ultimately means you'll feel better. You may not be able to exercise continuously for 20 to 30 minutes the first time you try. Start slowly and you'll improve gradually. Before you start any serious exercise program though, make sure it's okay with your doctor. Regular exercise can also help to prevent diseases such as heart attacks, high blood pressure, or cancer. That's why some people call it the motion potion because it helps to keep you healthier, but you have to exercise regularly. Swimming's an excellent sport because it builds endurance while increasing strength and flexibility. For some people, the pool is the place to be for exercise. My name is Shelly Ripple. I'm 17 years old and will be swimming for Stanford University. Sports in general bring many different uh, benefits to you and swimming has definitely brought me flexibility, strength, and endurance. You do have four different strokes and you and therefore you use different muscle groups and each muscle group is different from from every stroke and you build strength in all of the different areas of your body and when you swim and you do other activities in sports you build up endurance and strength and therefore you have more energy to do the everyday, everyday things in life. Swimming is fun. Swimming is fun because you're with your friends every day practicing and you're all going through the same things and you, you have a chance to get in shape in an environment where you learn how to, you learn discipline and swimming just allows you to get in shape easily. It's very, very cardiovascular. You have to hold, you have to learn to hold your breath, which helps your heart in the long run. And when you get out of a workout in the swimming pool, you feel so, you feel, it makes you feel so good. I do a, a number of dry land ex exercises from running to biking to aerobics and weight training and my favorite stroke would have to be backstroke and it's probably my favorite stroke because it's my best stroke and normally when you're good at something it becomes your favorite stroke. Some of my accomplishments in swimming, I've been a member of the national team for the past two years which is staying top 16 in the world and am the national record holder in the 100 yard backstroke in, um, in high school swimming. Swimming is very cool. 
When you swim, you kind of feel free in the water. You, you feel like a dolphin or like a fish. You can push off the wall and, and your legs start moving in a little motion like a dolphin and you look around, you can't hear anything. There's just bubbles around and you can feel, you can let everything go. Exercise brings yet another dimension to our health, strength for muscles and bones. Now, we're not just talking about for huge muscle swollen giants like myself. We're talking about strength for everyone. Stronger muscles and bones can mean better support for our bodies, better posture, an improvement in our oxygen intake, and a decreased risk of injury. Do you think tennis players need to be strong? If you don't think so, then think again. Hitting serves of over 100 miles per hour doesn't come from mere natural talent. It takes a lot of hard work and strength. My name is Chanda Rubin, and I'm a professional tennis player. I picked up a racket because you know, it was what my parents were doing, and I wanted to try it. And when I did try it, it, it was fun. Well, exercise in general has brought a lot to my life. It's, it's taught me a lot of things. Uh, you know, first and foremost of, of having a good base of fitness and, and feeling good. I think strength, endurance, and flexibility are, are all important. I mean, I, I can't say that, you know, one is more important than the other. Um, I think in tennis, a lot of people focus less on flexibility. I mean, strength and endurance, it's obvious that you need those things. Well, strength is very important because it, it allows you to have more power behind your shots. It allows you um, to, to be quicker on the court and it allows you um, in most cases you know to be a bit more agile. I developed strength by um, training in the gym, doing some weight training which is usually a full body workout. And the fastest serve I've ever hit was 105 miles per hour. I've gotten to the semifinals of the Australian Open. I've gotten to the quarterfinals of the French Open. I've, you know, I've gotten to play against top players like Steffi Graf, Arantxa Sanchez, and Monica Seles. I think exercise is a part of my life, and you know, it's something that you know makes me feel good. It's something that gives me more energy. It's something that is, I think, healthy. Sports at any level, it's fun. You know, have fun with it. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's a game. It's a sport. Live it. <laughs> One fifty two. One hundred and three pounds. I'm here with a high school wrestling team to make a very important point. Your body size and type doesn't necessarily indicate your fitness level. A thin person isn't necessarily fitter than a bigger person, and bigger isn't necessarily fitter than thinner. No matter what your size, it's important to keep your energy intake or the amount of calories you take in equal to your energy output or your exercise. So basically, don't eat too much. Don't eat too little and exercise. This will help you to reach your healthiest size. But whether you're big, small, stocky, or tall is not the most important thing. Keeping your energy input, calories, and your energy output, exercise, and balance is what counts the most. Tackle box brain teaser. Which exercise burns the most calories? A, running, B, swimming, C, walking stairs, or D, hula hooping? See if you know the right answer. Flexibility is another positive feature of exercise. Flexibility means the ability to move joints and muscles through a full range of motion. By having increased flexibility, you can minimize injuries and maximize your workouts. It ties in directly with strength and endurance. Whenever I think of flexibility, I think of gymnastics. Gymnastics is fun because you get to exercise and I like usually have a lot of energy and I just put it into gymnastics instead of anything else. Gymnastics is the best sport, I think, really. It's not boring and it's better than baseball and everything, <laughs> I think. Gymnasts uh, train on a regular basis. It's a very consistent sport. You have to do it consistently in order to achieve progress. In gymnastics, you have to be really strong and flexible and 
that's why we have to do flexibility and everything, because if you don't, then you're not going to be that good. Flexibility is a very important part of gymnastics. Uh, you cannot be a good uh, gymnast without flexibility. Uh, first, it keeps you healthy and it prevents injuries. Uh, also, the range of motions are much larger or bigger when you're flexible. Therefore, you're able to do more complicated skills or uh, do the skills more correctly. Laverde events being. Well, we do pull-ups and like arches and push-ups and crunches and all that type of stuff. Exercise is fun. It's hard sometimes, but it helps you stay in shape. Gymnastics is awesome. Exercise is special. I just like it. Gymnastics is a thing! You feel good because it's like you know that you've accomplished everything in that workout and you can go home happy and you're feeling good. Rollerblading, it's more, it's less formal, so you can do it with your friends. I like basketball because I can shoot very well, and I can be with friends. I've been BMX nationally racing for about two years now. It takes a lot of skill and uh, technique, a lot of training, hard training. It's a lot of fun jumping and Riding the track, meeting a lot of new people. And the answer to the tackle box brain teaser, drum roll please. If you said D, hula hooping, that's an incorrect answer. The correct answer is C, stair walking. Research has shown that moderate exercise can add up to two years to your life. One, two, three, I mean, one, two, three, I mean, one, one. I challenge you to exercise at least three times a week for 30 minutes to improve your overall fitness. Well, I'm back from my adventure and I've learned a lot. As you can see, our bodies are complex environments that need exercise to be kept in balance. Here are a couple things to keep in mind. Be careful not to push yourself too hard during exercise. The saying, no pain, no gain, is not necessarily true. If you overexert yourself, you could get injured. But don't let that scare you. Exercise is really cool. Exercise is fun. <laughs> exercise is awesome. It's fun. Exercise is cool and fun. That's all I can say. You see? Besides strengthening your heart and muscles, Exercise also relieves stress. It can help to prevent diseases like high blood pressure or heart disease. That's in addition to increased flexibility and endurance. It's a pretty good deal, especially if you enjoy the activity or the sport you're doing. That about wraps up our program for today, and I hope now that you have a better idea of why physical fitness is very important and how it can be fun too. Exercise, it's for you. You can pause to check your post heartbeat rate by feeling your carotid or artery. That's the artery on your uh -huh. What? <laughs> Janet! So on the outside environment. <laughs> You're supposed to stop. I did. No, you did not. Girl, let me do my job and you do yours. No, I am doing my job. I'm helping you out. One, two, 